What's up, fellas? What's going on? What's going on? Well, we've got another 2020. That's what's going on. I'm getting a little mad about it, to be honest with you. You see this whole, can you feel it? Like six or seven of these things so far this year, and I can't win one of these tournaments. And all my buddies, just win them. I win this one, and he wins that one, and <laughs> I'm going to win one, okay? I only got one more shot at this thing, but I am going to win one. And I'm just kidding. I'm not mad. It's actually been awesome to be able to hang out with all the guys this year and see Andrew's first win, Brian Latimer's first win, uh, Cox to win, all these guys to win, Tom Reddington to make his first Forest Wood Cup. There's so many cool moments this year, and I'm so glad I was a part of it, and I'm so glad you guys were a part of it as well. So if you haven't watched some of those videos that, uh, that just recently dropped, go check them out. Thank you for subscribing to the channel, and I appreciate all the support, guys. So if you could just get a chance right now, check your sub subscription. Make sure you're subscribed. So right here, right here, is that about right, Brandon? If I put it about right there, right there, the subscribe button. Is that right or not? I think I messed up. I don't know if that works like that way. Does it work that way? No, he's saying no. What would pop up right here that they can click? Nothing? We don't have clickable things? What kind of channel do we have, dude? Just subscribe to the channel. I'm not sure how you do it at this point because I'm all confused now. But nevertheless, thank you for the support. Okay. Thank you, Starbright. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. Starbright, Startron, it keeps my boats clean. It keeps my trucks running good, my boats running good. This stuff is amazing. This is the actual Startron uh, enzyme fuel treatment. I travel around the country, a lot of places, guys, and, and I can't always find ethanol-free fuel, okay? And I know you all have problems as well. You travel down the road, it's four in the morning, five in the morning, turn gas up or whatever, and you can't find it. Make sure you have some of this. Put it in your boat, put it in your truck. They have a diesel formula as well. It works really good. So this stuff is the real deal. It's super legit. Startron by Starbright. Very good stuff. So, uh, and thank you guys for all the support over there. I've been, I've been running this stuff for like four or five years. This stuff's awesome, okay? Love the guys there. Um, also, kind of a special little deal. We're gonna bring someone live in on the, on the, on the, on the chat today. Tyler Stewart. He was leading the tournament going into day three. Ended up finishing ninth. We're going to talk about what happened. Shenanigans. Total shenan. I'm mad about it. He doesn't even want to talk about it, but I'm mad. Shenanigans. Yeah, we're going to call him up. He's going to tell us what happened. You won't believe it. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the tournament. So uh, for me, Champlain's a special place. I've been able to win that tournament three times. Finished fourth twice. It's been good. It's always different though, and that's basically what you have to do on any tournament. Even though you've had past success and past history, you have to kind of wipe it clean and look at what's changed. Is it a different time of the year? What are the water temperatures? What are the water levels? This year, we dealt with a later spring, meaning the water temperatures were colder, meaning it pushed the spawn back farther. We were dealing with higher water than normal that, we've, that I've ever been part of in the spring. And that changes things. And I wasn't real sure what it was going to do. And I don't fish down south. I don't fish Ticonderoga area, which I know about half the guys will go down there. I just, I've had my success fishing for smallmouth. And that's just kind of what I do. I do try to mix in some largemouth along the way. Uh, I wasn't able to find the largemouth. I went up to Missisquoi Bay uh, and what happened there, and we'll talk more about the tournament too in a minute with what, what I did. But Missisquoi is an area that I like, and here's what happened to Missisquoi. And I don't think anybody caught him there. And I kind of, and I do feel good about this because I kind of thought in my back of my mind before practice started that Missisquoi wasn't going to be much of a factor this year because the water was about two and a half foot high. It was a later spring, meaning the fish are shallow, are going to stay shallow. They're not trying to post spawn. They're actually probably still spawning and garden fry. Water's up, and they've got all these. Uh, buoys then that's a big national refuge up there and you can't fish behind the buoys and most of the bays there it's like these buoys are way out so you can't cast over the buoys and you've got thousands of acres of flooded marsh behind these buoys and with the water up and a late spring i felt like the fish were going to stay back in the marsh there's no reason for them to come out and that's what happened in the past, the water's been lower. It's been more of a post-spawn. The fish will come out of the bays, the shallow bays, and come out to open water. That's when they start sitting up on the rocks, the ledges, the ditches, the law, everything out in the open water. That didn't happen. 
I kind of knew it wouldn't happen. I went and checked it anyways you have to, but I didn't catch a single largemouth up there on my good stuff. I did catch a few largemouth in a couple of my places, but, um, but it, just, it just wasn't happening. So that eliminated that part of the lake for me. Then it was all about finding some, uh, some big smallmouth. And another crazy thing happened, guys. Uh, real crazy. And I don't know what the name is. Uh, someone said this to me at the tournament, and, and I, it's completely wrong, but it's like the, the Swally or Swally, something like that. And what it is, <clears throat> is Lake Champlain's super deep in the middle, and these bays on the sides are all 20, 30 feet deep. The middle of the lake's like 150 to 200 feet deep. Super deep down there, super cold, thermocline. The wind blew hard out of the west, and it blew the surface warm air, water off to the other side of the lake. And when it did that, it, it, it sucked the water, the thermocline tilted basically, and it sucked the thermocline water, which is like right at freezing, into these shallow bays. The water went, it's the craziest thing ever. <clears throat> the water went from 64 degrees that morning, and I literally pull up and I'm like, oh, there's one, there's one. All right, everything's clicking. I'm like, game on. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, the wind started blowing. And I'm like, what if something's starting to look weird? Like things, fish are like not where they're supposed to be. I see one laying on the bottom, like literally like this. And I'm like, oh, well, somebody must have gut hooked the fish. It's just laying there. It's like freshly dead or something. And I just went on. Then about 10 minutes later, I find another one laying there. These are on, they're laying on beds, by the way, laying there. And I pitched my bait down there and hit it a few times and it wakes up or you know whatever and kind of wobbles off it's like whoa, whoa, whoa and it just goes back over on the ground and falls down and it's like dying and i'm like what the heck is going on and then i catch one and when i grab the fish it's like ice water the water went from 63 degrees to 44 degrees in like an hour and by the end of the day in this area it was 41 degrees it ran all the fish out that much of a temperature drop completely destroyed the area and that was one of the things I kept thinking it would come back. I kept thinking the water would warm up and it would come back and the fish would move back into that area and it, they never did. And so hindsight 2020, I should have just abandoned it, just completely wrote it off and, and not fooled with it. But I kept spending time in practice and in the tournament checking those areas to see if that water temperature would rise, which it did eventually, but the fish never really came back. So it was a weird deal. But we'll talk more about that in a minute now. Let's jump over. Let's give old Tyler Stewart a call and see what he's up to. What's up? What's up? What's going on, Scott? You said it's lightning real bad there? Oh, yeah. We're sitting under a dock right now. So oh, my goodness. Let's chill out so we can get back to the ramp. All right. So you're doing a little practice today for the ICAST Cup, right? Yeah. We're out here on Toho. Uh, we've been out here all day. Yeah. So it's kind of tough. But, uh, Is it tough? The fish, fish starting to show up a little bit offshore on those shell beds and stuff? Oh, uh, yeah, we caught a few doing that today. Yeah. So, um, didn't catch any giants, though. We caught a couple, three, three and a half pounders, so. Okay. Well, good job at the last tournament, man. I know um, I know it's bittersweet. I mean, for you guys to make, for you to make a top 10 there, awesome fishery. I mean, everything was going your way. And, and look, I, I, I talked to you before, and you're like, ah, I don't even know if I want to talk about it. But I do. I want to talk about it, just me, because I've been doing this 20 years, dude. And what I feel like happened... And I haven't told everybody watching yet exactly what happened, but you know, I, I know what happened uh, on day three and four where some local fishermen in the area came in and basically prevented Tyler from fishing some of the areas that he had been fishing. And it wasn't as much as just they got in the way. Like they literally did things like threw rocks in the water, put boulders in front of the pipe that he was catching fish on. Things that I consider completely unsportsmanlike. Okay, look, it's one thing. If you're down there, a local's down there fishing, and he doesn't want to move for a little bit, then okay, all right? Tyler has a chance. He's leading the tournament, has a chance to win it. But to block the spot with your boat and tie up your boat in front of the pipe and throw rocks and boulders and do everything in your power to prevent Tyler from winning a tournament, uh, in my opinion, crosses the line in so many ways. So I, I wanted to bring that up. I want the pu public to know that. I know you've been real apprehensive about talking about it because that's just not your style. But at the same time, again, I've been doing this 20 years and I feel like people, they just shouldn't act that way, dude. I mean, don't you agree? Oh, no doubt. I mean, I definitely didn't do anything to those guys to make them do that, you know. Uh, they were up there on vacation and 
You know, they felt like that they deserved to fish that spot more than me, considering that, you know, they uh, were just up there fun fishing and wanted to catch some fish. And I guess that was uh, more important than, you know, me winning $100,000, which I'm not saying if I would have been able to fish it off one, but, uh, you know, that a lot of my fish came from those areas. And uh, them blocking it from me the third and fourth day made it a lot tougher on me, which, um, which you know, like I said, no excuses, but uh, it was uh, – I'm, I'm still happy to, you know, come out top 10, you know, doing what I did, but just uh, maybe um, I hopefully won't run into anything like that again. That was kind of a bad deal. Well, you know, and, and hats off to you because I don't know how I would have handled it, to be honest with you. That's a sticky situation with a lot of emotions on the line, a lot of money on the line, year-end tournament, I mean, tour event. We're a professional sporting event on this lake, and, you know, to have things like that happen, I'm not sure how I would have handled it. So you handled it well. Because you were nice to the people, you know, you said, hey, do you mind if I get in here and fish a little bit? And they were just adamant, like, no, you're not going to fish it, dude. And that's just the way it's going to be. And they not only hurt you, they actually hurt Brian Latimer because he was fishing in the area some too. And Brian told me the stories about, you know, them preventing him from uh, getting in there and fishing. So, you know, it, it was just one of those things. You handled it well. Uh, I, I feel like if that wouldn't have happened to you, you would have been right there to win the tournament, man. I mean, because that was the kind of bags you were catching every single day, and you kind of had to make adjustments on day three and four. So uh, good good job, good tournament. Uh, glad you didn't put somebody in the chokehold and get arrested because that's probably what, what happened to me. <laughs> you know, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was just unfortunate, man. And I, 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 hope, I hope, and the reason I'm bringing this part of the video up uh, in the video is that I want people to, to hear this because, again, it upsets me. If, if people are going to act like this on the water, then that's just not right. That's just not right. It's just not right in any way. So whoever these people were, whether it was one of them or two of them or five of them or whatever conspiracy thing was going on down there with these local people on vacation or whatever, shame on you guys. I, I don't know what else to say, but shame on you. And whoever knows these people should tell them that. Shame. I don't, I don't think it's cool one bit. Uh, at all, so it's just not how you're supposed to act on the water. But you handled it well, man. Well, like I said, it, it wasn't just me. They were mad at you know the whole tournament population. When I when I went up there and asked them if they mind if I fish, you know, with them, they they said, you know, we've had tournament boats on our spots all week, and uh, you know, then preventing us from catching fish or whatever. So they're you know they's like, we ain't moving, we ain't leaving. You know, we've got we've got our spot, and this is where we're gonna be. Yeah. And, uh, sure enough, you know, they they stayed there and did what they could do to block it from whoever wanted to come in there. Yeah. Like I said, you know, Brian, me, who, you know, whoever wanted to fish it. And I think me and Brian might have been the only ones that found that this week. But, um, and it was a really special spot. Yeah. I don't know why, why they were there and so big, but, um, I mean, the first the first day I pulled up there, I'd already had like 18 pounds before I got there, and then I caught two four-pounders, and I left it. Well, Brian slides in after I fish it and catches 18 pounds off of it. Really? So it was, so it, it, was, it had some big fish on it, so them guys knew that uh, they were guarding a good spot. Yeah, yeah. Well, good job, dude. I just want to give you a little shout-out on that one, man. We're doing the 2020, and, um, you know, it was a good good week for a lot of people that week. Uh, Tom Reddington, our roommate, made the, the Forestwood Cup for the first time. Latimer made the Forestwood Cup as well. So pretty much everybody had a good week, and... Uh, and you did as well, man. So I'll, I'll have to come out and hang out with you. I'll see you at ICAST in a few days. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Sounds good. Appreciate the call, Scott. We'll see okay. You. See you, Tyler. See you, man. All right. Well, that's it, guys. Ah, with him. Again, golly, it drives me crazy. And, and I might be going a little overboard here, guys, but I just think that's really, really bad. I don't know all the details, obviously. I'm sure there's two sides to every story. But at the end of the day, I do know those guys really prevented uh, Tyler to fish the spot. I know that they threw boulders in the water in front of the pipe to prevent uh, the fish setting up on the pipe the way they were. Hey! Hey, you deluvio! They actually parked their boat in front of the pipe and left, like literally left their boat there in front of the pipe while they went across into in some pond across the road and fished. Lots of things that were in my mind super uncool so shame on you guys uh you know I, I think I, I think people need to have etiquette on the water especially 
during these tournaments. I think Tyler and, and Brian and some of these other guys probably handled it the best they could. They did the very best they could. So hats off to them on that. So we, we talked about it a little bit. Congratulations to Tom Reddington, First Forcewood Cup. He fished real hard this year. Uh, he had some good finishes. Also, Brian Latimer. I mean, this guy's been killing it. First time he's qualified for the Forcewood Cup. I think the entire SMC house is actually going to go to Arkansas, which is very cool. So we're going to have to get a, a nice little pad there. And then during the tournament, I think we're all going to split up. Everybody's going to do their own thing because i got to win this tournament. I'm not playing around anymore, okay? I'm, I'm, just go do your own thing, guys. But for practice, we can all huddle up. Tournament time, beat it. That's right. I'm going to bring my family in. I'm sure everybody's going to bring their family in, so it's going to be a lot of fun. But, you know, again, looking at, at Champlain for me was, was, it's bittersweet. Yes, I did good, but I didn't do good enough. And for me, when I look back at this tournament, it's like, you know, again, that's what this video is about. It's hindsight 2020. You get three days of practice. And on a, on a fishery as big as Lake Champlain, it is difficult to cover all of, you can't cover it all. You can't. So you have to break down the lake in sections and based on weather for practice and weather for the tournament. So you can eliminate, you've got to try to at least eliminate over half of the lake in your mind. And that's what I did. Now I did make some good decisions on where to look, but I just, when you're sight fishing, sometimes it boils down to just whether you found him or not. I mean, I found two and three pounders. You saw me catch hundreds of those. Uh, but it was, it was hard to find those, those true four pounders. I mean, it was really, really hard, but you know, it, it, it was a, it was a fun week. Uh, I hope we go back, you know, people are starting to figure out Lake Champlain. So the, the fishing, I think is just, the weights are going to continue to go up. Um, people are starting to figure out how to catch them at tie. People are starting to figure out a lot more of the smallmouth stuff. So it's a, it's a cool, a cool little deal going on there. So, um, if I could go back in time, though, I think what I would do is I would check some areas throughout the tournament a little bit more. I stayed a little long in some areas thinking I could find that one more fish. You know, day one, I had 17 pounds. I caught a lot of fish on day one. I mean, a lot. Guys, I mean, like this first spot was stupid, ridiculous, good. So, matter of fact, here, take a look at a couple of these little fish catches we caught here. Some couple key moments here. Kind of got the tournament going in my direction. Take a look at this. That's a kelp. That's a kelp. That's a good one right there. Yes! That's a big one, guys. Huh? I'm just gonna catch him and weigh him and see what he weighs. Yeah, he's a big one, dude. He's a real big one. Coming in, coming in, coming in. Yeah. Whoa, that's a big one. See, that's crazy. The big ones, the big ones are light colored and they don't look big. The black one over here, that's awesome, guys. It's another good one. Wasn't that cool? I mean, it was like, and these things were aggressive. I mean, it was like one flip, get it down there, shake it a little bit. Here they come, donk, donk, donk. I mean, it was awesome. It was awesome having Brandon in the boat too to capture some of those, uh, some of those angles that we haven't been able to capture all year long. So that was kind of cool uh, as well. But but again, I stayed a little long in those areas, and I and I, if I could go back in time, I I would have just left the whole time. I kept saying, I need to run south. I need to run south. On day one, I need to run south, and I need to go down there, and I need to check some stuff uh, that I need. To, I haven't had time to check in practice, and I, like an hour went by. I kept thinking I need to leave now, and then I didn't. I thought, well, let me look a little more. Let me look a little more, and then all of a sudden, I didn't find any more. An hour went by, and then I finally left, and I ran out of time. I literally got down to where I was going to fish, and I caught like a three and three quarter, another three and three quarter. I mean, boom, boom, boom. I went from 17 to 18 and a half pounds in just a few minutes, and I had to leave. So, 
if I'd had another hour down there, I probably could have found another three and three quarters, which I think my bottom fish that day was three pounds. So I would have had 19 and a half and a, a pound at Champlain is huge, huge. So that's kind of where I messed up. Um, but you know, it, it's, it, it was a, it was a fun week. Again, I hope we go back. Um, you know, we did a, we did a podcast at the house, which I thought was great. I, a lot of comments on that. A lot of good comments. And guys, let me say this. And we'll talk about this in this little 2020, kind of getting off subject a little bit about the tournament. But that whole Mike Long snagging thing that we discussed in the uh, podcast at the house, we weren't real sure what was going on with that. We had seen uh, Rob had kind of popped out the video for just a few minutes and we watched a few little clips and we kind of heard the backstory about what Mike Long had been doing snagging these bass. And since then, you know, just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments uh, on the video. Matter of fact, if you want to know exactly what happened, uh, go check the video out. We'll drop the link down below. You just read the comments. It's pretty amazing. But, you know, I have to take a little bit of a stand on this. Mike Long, dude, that's not cool. That's bad. Bad. That's not good at all. He, he, he cheated a lot of people. Tournaments, records, uh, it just wasn't good. Not good in any way. I, I, I hate that for our sport because our sport is full of a lot of great people. And to have someone like Mike take advantage of our sport and cheat his way through the industry, uh, super bad. Super, super bad. So that's not cool. Again, after reading more about it, watching a few more videos and knowing kind of the, probably still not the full story, but a lot of the story, Mike Long's a bad dude. Not cool at all, Mike Long. Uh, so I'll say, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. He's deleted all of his Instagram. He's deleted all of his Facebook. He's deleted all of his YouTube. He's disappeared. I mean, even the industry, any photo of Mike Long on the internet, it's pretty much getting deleted. So he's gone. He's gone. But it was a bad deal. So, so guys, that is it in 2020. I know we spent some time with Tyler. Congratulations again to all the guys that made the Forestwood Cup. Uh, hopefully we won't be doing a 2020 after the Forestwood Cup because I'm going to be sitting here with the trophy and we'll do a talk about it, not a 2020, we'll talk about how I won the tournament. That's the plan, guys. That is the plan. So thanks for hanging out and thank you so much for all the support this year. I really do appreciate it. It's what drives me. It's what keeps us going. It's what, uh, it's, what it's all about. So thank you so much for the support. Thank you to all my sponsors and all the partnerships that we've uh, developed over the years. So. Uh, we've got a little bit of a downtime between the next tournament, so it's going to be just a little while. So some other good news is Hillary, my daughter, just launched her channel just recently. She's at like a thousand subscribers, so go check it out. We're building up a little library of videos for her. Uh, she loves to fish for bass. She loves saltwater fishing. It's going to be really cool stuff, so we'll drop a link down below. Go check it out. Hillary Martin, the real Hillary Sue. Uh, very cool stuff. So guys, thanks so much, and we're going we're gonna to go. We're going to go, and I'm going to go to iCast and check out new lures and you know what we'll do? I'll come back and do something post iCast. I don't know if it's in here or whatever and we'll talk about some new stuff, some new cool stuff at iCast. How about that? We'll see you guys. Bam!